Hey, wake up. There's so much out there to see. Look up. Look down.
Saskatchewan, you know Sastel because we're everywhere. Because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. With Sastel sponsorships, we get to be part of your community. We're here with you and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. These teams were on the ice this morning in the first draw. Steve Laycock against Nicholas Sedin. I had practice session before the game and a draw to the button to determine who would have last rock here in the opening end. It was Steve Laycock winning that draw to the button. So they have last rock throwing the red stones. The Dean team putting up the center guard with the first stone and Steve Laycock looking to come around now. Braden Stewart will bring that right to the top of the eight foot. For those of you that were watching uh, some of the Grand Slam action last week, uh, Nicholas Dean, I believe, went down with a bit of a knee injury and, and missed the last couple of games there, and it looks like he's not playing here either. As it is uh, third Oscar Erickson right now in the house holding the broom. The lead is Christopher Sundgren. Second, Rasmus Rana, and I do believe it. They're just playing with just the three players. Looking for the come around here, and would like to sit in the corner of that red stone. Maybe nudges it just a little bit, but I think he stays a piece in front of it. Of course, for the Laycock team, this is uh, the lead, Braden Stewart. Chris Heikert throws the second stones. Sean Meacham is the third. And a longtime Saskatchewan skip, Steve Laycock, although he spent a couple of years away playing with Jim Cotter in BC. Back to playing full time in Saskatchewan now. And Braden looking to come down, maybe nudge that yellow stone just enough to break the existing freeze. Sits right on top of it. It's a good look from the overhead. It appears to be Steve Laycock sitting one right now. With that freeze that Braden Stewart just made, they've got a way to get that Yellowstone out. Erickson looking at uh, what do we do to break that freeze up? First indication was they were going to play something onto the red-yellow combination and just try to tap it back a little bit. I think they discussed a few other options, but that's what they've gone back to. Nothing out of the sweep yet. They wanted to bump this a little bit, but they'd like to keep the shooter in front of the red if they could. Gets the little tap back, nudges the second red as well, and does leave the shooter in front of that red stone. It's the Adin team sitting one right now, that stone on the corner of the button. Laycock has second and third. Boy, if this is the way these two teams want to play the first end, we're in for a treat here. They're going all out to manipulate angles already in the first end of play. You will a lot of times see teams play a little bit more close to the vest early. Chris Heikert looking to come down and tap the yellow onto the red. This might have been inside. They jumped the sweep right away. He's going to be on the front one. Actually curls past the nose of the front one and will tap it into that angle just to the right side of center from the overhead. It does expose second shot rock and it might be available to, uh, it might be available 
to play a, a run onto Shotstone now. Don't think there's any question Erickson wants to play something on the yellow yellow red combination I think what they're talking about is how hard do they play it you could hit it hard and, and probably kill both reds Rasmus Rana the second Bigger weight here. Does get the Reds all moving now. I think that might have caught them by surprise. I don't think they expected that to come back and catch their own shot stone, and it does. So the two stones spilling over to the right-hand side as the uh, shooter looks at it. It is Laycock still sitting shot rock. Wanting an idea there of how much room there is. Figuring that uh, Erickson will play yellow onto red on that side and may be able to come in off of it. So I think maybe they were a little worried about bringing this in behind the cover and perhaps leaving a double that way. Talked about going open, but in the end, uh, Chris Eichert being asked to make the draw around the center guard. Sit two. Boy, this is really getting tight to the guard. They had to go really hard to get it by. Now, is it going to pop out into the open? No, nope, stops just dead in behind. It is shot rock. Laycock sitting two. Any attempt to play the double now is very flat. Erickson does look at it. Also looking at the short run on his own. Very similar shot to what they just played. So that's what they're going to go with here. If he can stick it right on the nose, he would be shot rock. This is going to be close. Boy, it might have overcurled just a little bit, but uh, in so doing... Spins the shooter in behind the rocks on the corner and it sits for shot rock. Steve Whitecock thinking about a run back as well. Are a couple of ways this can go good for you if you do put it onto the yellow the top of the 12 foot you probably lose one of your own but the one that you're raising in might scoot in behind cover for shot rock ideally sean meacham here with his first stone looking to run this red back onto the yellow shot stone Playing the out turn, so they got to curl just across the face. Not getting the curl, so the last minute decision is to try to make sure they roll off of it so they've got a shot on the, on the next one. Team Adin sitting one. Could play the yellow red, kill the uh, red second shot stone, but uh, they would leave all of their stones grouped. Probably worried about uh, bringing a blank into play that way. Oscar did look at the come around as well on the center guard.
don't have mics on the players, but it sure is nice when they point at what they're talking about so that we've got an idea. They've looked at a few different shots here. I think the idea is they want to try to kill the redstone. And uh, that red-yellow in the 8-foot, they're just about touching each other now, so they expect that that yellow is going to move over into the 4-foot area. They're going to try to bring the shooter with it a little bit, and I think they uh, expect that the the first yellow stone is going to stay on the edge of the 12 foot somewhere. So hoping to sit three when this comes to rest. Looking to perhaps force Steve Laycock to take a single here in this opening end of play. On the sweep right away, wants to hit fairly close to the nose on the first one. He will hit about two thirds. Boy, he does everything just the way they wanted. It had two ox spinning towards the middle and did squirt the first raised stone in behind the corner guard. That stone should be the one that guarantees Steve Laycock's not going to have a chance to blank this end. There is a possibility he can make the double and roll behind the the yellow guard just off center line. Sean Meacham. With his second stone here in the first end, looking to make the double roll behind cover if he could. Boy, they're going to have to go just to make contact. This is Headed towards the hole. If there'd been a hole, I think he'd have been through it. Makes contact, moves two yellow stones, but doesn't get either one of them out of the rings. Continues to be Team Adine sitting three. Looking at coming around, I, I thought they might look at guarding, and that's one of the things Oscar's looking at now. Not sure what they settled on. You come around now and you might leave a double for Steve Laycock to get in behind cover. If you guard, yes, he's going to try to come around yours, but it's going to be a fairly short run and it is your own rock. I think they've settled on the draw. Playing three-handed, it appears that it is Christopher Sundgren holding the broom for Erickson as he gets into the hacks. Well, I thought they had settled on trying to come in. They end up making the perfect guard. Steve Laycock now with no choice but to try to come around wide on the intern side. If he can get shot rock here, might still have a chance for two. If he doesn't get shot rock with this one, he might have a hard time scoring this end. And I wonder if that's not part of what Steve Laycock is thinking here. The guard is fairly high. They might be thinking there's room to get between the two guards, and if you happen to clip one of them, you know you're going to have a shot with your last one. Or he might just be straight peeling the top guard.
Steve Laycock still not sure what he likes here. Didn't like this as much from the hacks as he did from the other end. And, and with the broom placement, I think he might have been playing the run back. There's a lot of room between them. If he ever drove it just by, you'd be in trouble. And, and maybe it's that the port looks bigger from the hacks than he thought. Now it looks like he's trying to come between the two yellow guards, try to move shot stone. And of course, if he crashes one of the guards... That will at least open up room for him to throw his last one. For those of you who've been with us earlier in the day, you've seen uh, there is plenty of movement late in these rocks that uh, if he can get tight by the high guard, the second guard won't be a factor, and he should be able to get to enough of that shot rock to, uh, to stick around. Sweeping for a little extra curl now. He's got lots of room by the high guard. Just rubs the second one, but enough that uh, he catches the shot stone and rolls the shooter off to the corner of the eight foot. Boy, bad break there for Steve Laycock that he rubbed, had to rub that uh, tighter guard. If he gets by the way that was curling, he probably hits and rolls in behind cover. Still, he'll be thankful that he's going to have a, a shot to score with his last one. Oscar Erickson still has a chance to put a lot of pressure on if he can hit and roll back in for shot rock behind cover. He's going to have a piece of the forefoot. We saw Sean Meacham earlier in the end trying to run back in the same spot, and he didn't get the curl there either. This one hits just a little bit on the outside, and we'll stay in the 12-foot. So it is. Team of Dean sitting three. Steve Laycock with last rock here in the first end. Going to have the chance to draw. Just needs a bite of the 8-foot. The draw to the button before the game in the attempt to get last rock is, of course, thrown the other direction, but uh, Steve Laycock did grab a piece of the button on that stone, so should have a bit of an idea about draw weight. Final stone underway, Steve Laycock. Last rock here drawing against three. The brushers have picked it up early. Just needs a bite of the eight foot. He's got room by the front one. Needed a piece of the eight foot. Puts it on the corner of the button. Steve Laycock picking up a single point here in the first end. He'll take a one nothing lead. Team of Dean will have last rock in the second.
lot of rocks in that first end of play, but uh, in the end, just one of them ending up on the scoreboard. Steve Lancock with his last, drawing to the corner of the button. And it looks like both teams willing to play offense here again in the second end. Center guard throwing up at the first one. You just saw the corner guard come to rest, and Braden Stewart being asked to throw another one to the middle. Looking to come off the center line this time a little bit and really kind of block the path behind the corner guard. an interesting call you don't see that as much anymore you used to see it a little bit in the three rock when the free guard zone was just starting team would teams would play the guards out of line like that just to cut off half the sheet it's it's certainly a little bit more uncomfortable for the team with last rock because at this point in the end the out turn to the button's already gone and you really can't use the corner guard that you've got up so for now looking to come around Christopher Sundgren does bring that stone into the top of the eight foot behind the one red guard on that side of center. Chris Eigert being asked to come around everything, including the stone at the top of the eight foot. Rushers have been on this most of the way. It's it's getting really tight to the guard. And he's not going to be coming around the stone in the eight, but might be able to freeze to it. Nudges it just a little bit. Stays in line with it, though. Sixth rock of the end here, and uh, Oscar Erickson would have the option to start moving guards. The problem is the guard that's the easiest one to move is the one guarding the two stones in the rings, and you'd just leave the short run back if you made that. So they're going to try to come down, sit right on the corner of the red stone in the 12 foot. bit more line than uh, what uh, Chris Heikert had. Comes down, nudges it on a bit of an angle. Leaves the shooter in behind cover, though. The yellow's probably about half covered. Tough to uh, make it to play directly onto it. Steve Laycock looking at, do we run the guard straight back? Run it on a slight angle at the yellow at the top 12. Chris Heikert in the hacks now looking for the run back. Would like to leave his shooter right in front of his own stone if he could. And this is going to have to curl a little bit. Now it's going. He's close. Gets the run. Actually catches the stone off the top of the forefoot as well and 
kills both yellows, leaves two reds in the rings, the one shot stone dead behind cover, and Chris Eichert just waiting for Sean Meacham to come and pat him on the back. They got a lot out of that rock. The run back, the double, and they left themselves a center guard. Guarding shot rock. Oscar Erickson looking at the double peel. And it's going to be hard to get the top one. It can be done, certainly, but uh, tricky to get the top red one underneath the yellow corner. Boy, that's a really nice shot by Rasmus Rana to leave his corner guard in play. That wasn't easy. Laycock sitting two. We'll just look to guard the shot stone for now. Sean Meacham with his first here of the second end. That started to really take off on them. They had to just back away from the sweep. If it keeps going, it's just going to overcurl. Probably has left a little more than half now. And the guard is high. Looking for the hit and roll. The sweep was on early on this one, and it's really curling hard by the front one. Don't know if he's going to be thin enough to get the roll, though. Stays in the open in the eight foot. It is Team Adine sitting one. Blaycock has second shot, and lots of room to play the hit and roll undercover. Sean Meacham with his second, and they jumped the sweep on this one right away as well. They're going to have to go to hold the shooter. Makes contact. Drives the yellow through the rings. That nice control weight. The shooter does stay. Now it rolls well past the guard. It's Laycock sitting two right now. Both of the stones are in the open. Not really a, a double opportunity. You will see a lot of these top teams in the world go through the options, but it's amazing how often you see it. Now, uh, Oscar Erickson, with his first uh, thought, was looking at playing the hit and roll undercover. Disgust coming around, but he goes back to that first option, and I think that's true of a lot of these top teams. You'll see them go back to their first option. Playing the hit and roll. He's close now. Did that curl too much at the end? Boy, such big finish here on this uh, ice and swift current. Makes the hit, but rolls just out into the open past the guard.
probably room for Steve Laycock if he wants to give it a try to, to stay in behind the center guard. Certainly we've seen already there's lots of late movement there. He can see just about all of it. They jumped the sweep on this one right away as well. Now backing away, he's got room by the front one. Well, the way they swept that, it looked like they didn't want to roll behind cover. And that may be that with it being that far back, they thought Oscar might just draw around, freeze to it, try to set up his deuce that way. His first thought here was to try to come around the corner. He's got room now. Looking at coming around the center, the danger with coming around the center is if you make it good, Steve Laycock's just going to follow it down, sit on the corner of your stone and really cut down the rings for any attempt at, at two. And if you ever happen to come deep, he freezes to it and you might be looking at a steal. His first thought again was to draw behind the corner, and that's what they've gone back to. This is certainly the safer shot, and, and really there's room here to, to bury around that yellow corner. Get shot rock in the eight foot, and... Uh, because it's your own stone that you're coming around, Steve Laycock probably not going to be inclined to run it back. No matter what he makes, you're going to have the forefoot available for your last one to make sure you've got a chance to score. Oscar Erickson with his first stone here in the second end, looking to bury one around the corner, see if he can set up a chance for two. Jumping up to assist with the sweeping. He's got room by the front one. Boy, this looks like a nice shot coming in here. Pulls that stone right into the top of the eight foot. You can see from that shooter's end camera view, dead in behind cover. Steve Laycock can't really do anything with that. He's going to have to try to bury one himself around the middle. Try to put it in a spot where Oscar Erickson can't get at it, and he'll still have the button and a fair bit of the forefoot available to try to get his single point. Steve Laycock with his final stone in the first end drew right to the corner of the button. And I believe this was his uh, draw to the button path in the pregame. Wants to curl past the button here, obviously. Wants to keep the shooter in behind cover. Crushers had picked this one up early. got a nice line coming by but it's just a question now of is he going to have enough weight to get shot rock brushers really working it for everything they've got and i think it came up a little bit short there's a good look at it from the overhead it certainly appears that it's the erickson stone sitting shot rock regardless that stone's buried so oscar was going to have to draw with this one anyway but it Appears to be a draw for two. 
boy, six inches more on that one from Steve Laycock. He's got the force with the line he had. If you could have brought that about three inches deep or three feet, pardon me, deeper, uh, steel wouldn't have been out of the question. Oscar Erickson would have had to get a piece of the button. As it is, needs a full eight foot here with his final stone, can pick up the deuce and take the lead. Oscar Erickson, nice draw on his first one going to the corner now with his final stone coming towards the middle. Doesn't need to worry about the guards. Put his first one right in front of the T-line, puts his second one right on the corner of the button. Two points for Team Adine. In the second end, gives them the two to one lead. Steve Laycock with Last Rock in the, in the third. Sass Tell Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? Sass Tell can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. That's the question about if our houses are painted or are they logo. Our events are always painted houses, but in the future coming out, I'm pretty sure we're going to be going to all logo houses. Uh, they're a great revenue source for any curling club. You can get your advertisements on there. And usually after the first year, the houses are paid for it's all free money for you. So hopefully check it, check Jet Ice out for your future in-house look. Hey, wake up. There's so much out there to see. Look up, look down. Quick, look over there. Look for a little trouble, but not too much. Open your eyes to something new every day. The hustle, the bustle, the calm, the serene. Maybe then you'll see that sometimes you have to go far to get a little closer. So wake up. The day is far from over. Seize the days. Sean Joyce with you here live from the IG Wealth Management Western Showdown in Swift Current. Draw three. Second game for both of these teams. And both of them have come to play. We've had some rocks in play. Every end and looking like we're going to have them again here in the third. Team Dean picking up the deuce in the second with a lead here. Through the tight center. Braden Stewart was asked to come around and that stone is the one you just saw come to rest. He comes up short. So now with two center guards, Oscar Erickson asking Christopher Lundgren to come around. And he will bring that right around to the top of the forefoot. Maybe leaves about a third of that exposed. Braden Stewart looking to come down, tap that stone a little bit. Brushing from the offside, trying to get some extra curl on it. Nudges it out into the open and does hang the shooter on the back of the 12 foot. Still, it continues to be Team Dean sitting one. In the open now, looking at coming around to sit two. Sixteen teams began play here in Swift Current earlier today. Looking for one of eight spots in the playoffs that begins Sunday night. The winner of this draw will have a chance uh, 
in the early draw tomorrow, 10 o'clock, I believe it is, to be one of the first playoff teams. Another great draw by Christopher Sundgren brings that one right around to the top of the button. So it is Team of Dean sitting two. Laycock with last rock here in the third end. Asking Chris Heikert to come down. Looks like uh, with that broom, probably looking for just enough weight to maybe move both Yellowstones if he could. He won't, won't likely be able to kill either one of them, but he'd like to get them both behind the T-line and out for behind cover if he could. Rushers are going to have to go to get it by the one out front, though. Oh, great job on the brush. Gets by. Nudges the one stone back, and it will go just through the rings, and the shooter stays almost frozen on the shot stone. But that shot stone, still belonging to Team Adeen, is covered. Oscar asking uh, Rasmus Rana to come in and sit on the corner of the red stone at the top of the eight foot. Expecting that Steve Laycock is going to make some kind of play on the guards on the next stone. What that'll be probably depends on uh, what kind of angles they leave after this shot. Maybe a little over enthusiastic on the sweep there, even jumping up to sweep his own rock, comes down and actually nudges off that red stone. You can see not quite all of the Yellowstone that was just delivered, and there's certainly room to get some finish by the guard. You might be able to move both yellows. I think uh, it looked like Steve's first thought was to play the hit and roll, and it might have come from the other end, but maybe we can move them both. You'd have to leave your shooter out in the open to do that. Don't need to kill him, but it might be nice to get that one off the button when you've got a chance. Chris Eichert with the attempt. Sean Meacham, the inside brusher, was on there early. Now it's straightened out on them a bit and looking for a little extra curl at the end. Comes down with that nice quiet weight enough to uh, move the stone back off the button. I believe it's the Adine stone on the edge of the forefoot still sitting as shot rock, but second and third belong to Steve Laycock and Oscar Erickson can't really play the role undercover here because he'd drive the red onto his own stone. Saw a bit of an indication that the red guard over the top of the yellow into the house. And I don't know if that's something they're looking at playing themselves right now or if it's something they're thinking if they make the freeze onto the red stone at the top of the forefoot, that uh, run back starts to get a little bit easier for them. Looks like they are looking at playing it. So red guard onto the yellow. 
a little over the top of the yellow and try to drive it back onto what is currently second shot. The only downside I see to a shot like this, is you're probably going to open up the center line. Makes the hit onto the second, drives it back, actually kills both red stones out of the top of the house. Shooter spins all the way across and out of play, however, so no guards left in play. It is Team of Dean sitting two. Can't really play the double right now because you'd probably jam it on your own. Could perhaps hit and roll over in that direction, though. I'm going to throw a little bit more weight, try to hit this stone thick enough to drive it by the red stone and use the weight to get the roll over towards that other yellow stone and perhaps set up a double later on. Sean Meacham with his first here in this third end. going to over curl on them he makes the hit but he's going to actually roll a little bit to the outside gives rana the chance to play the double on the reds and sit to say two uh, probably wouldn't leave a very easy double yet either so could be looking at a force here Interesting that uh, the sticks with the out turn here. We saw Sean Meacham in the first end and then Oscar Erickson later on in the end throw this turn and both of them ran very straight. Gets to the inside this time, but maybe too far to the inside, jams it. And the shooter's going to roll across and does hang on for third. Back of the 12 foot. Didn't have a great look at the release there, but I have to think he was a little inside on that. Two stones in the first end. Nobody that close to the... Nobody curled across like that. Sean Meacham now going to make a play on shot stone. Doesn't need the double here. He could just hit and roll over. Actually hit right on the nose he sits too. But they will look to roll to the outside just a little bit. And that all comes down to these top teams have so much respect for each other. They know that if they hit and stay right there, Oscar's going to try to hit and roll to the middle. Not trying to make a double on his first one, just trying to set it up for his second one. Well, even thinking now, they could nose it. And if uh, Steve Laycock noses again, it probably does leave a cross house double. Only thing they really don't want to do here is roll to the outside. He could roll to the center line or just pass the center line, and then probably no matter where Steve Laycock rolls, he's going to leave a double. Could be a tough double, a flat double, but these guys can all throw it hard enough to make those. The other option that they discussed, try to hit this on the nose. You figure Steve Laycock will have to hit it on the nose again, and then you might have angle for a cross house double. Starting to curl now does come right to the nose. Steve Laycock this time will definitely want to roll just a little bit to the outside. Takes away that cross house double because the first stone probably jams. Roll. Uh, Probably a rock's width, probably takes it away. 
be tough even if you just hit it on the nose, but probably possible, and Oscar Erickson will give it a go for sure. Boy, really starting to curl now. Doesn't want to roll towards the center line. That'll actually make it easier. Now rolls a couple of inches that way. Certainly no jam there now. It's probably there. It's a little bit flat, so looks like Oscar looking to play the uh, well. The left-hander's in turn at it, so he's coming into the stone and can use the. Uh, the turn to gear effect. Get a little bit more action on his shooter that way. This is not a bad angle. He he's, doesn't have to hit this ridiculously thick. Thick side of a half. A half might do it. He does have to have some weight, and he doesn't have a problem with that. Brusher on this one right away. Going to hit the first one. A little thick. Comes across. Nudges the second one. Not able to get it out, but his shooter spins up and stays in front of it. Boy, this is going to be really tricky for Steve Laycock to try to get to because he's got to pass that by his own stone. It's probably just there to pass it by and hold his shooter. Scoreboard kind of blocking your view on the overhead view, but that redstone would pretty much be right where the uh, yellow scoreboard stone is. It's just fully in the 12 foot, and that yellow on the outside on the left, as Steve Laycock is looking at, as we look at uh, Sean Meacham, that one's got about half the 12 foot, so really can't afford to touch that red one on the way by. He's got to pass it by that one cleanly and hold the shooter to pick up his two points here. Tough, tough shot here for Steve Laycock going after his deuce in the third end. They picked up the brush right away. Got both brushers down. Just a heavy draw is all he's throwing here. Needs to be fairly thin on the contact. Makes the rub, pushes it just far enough, and hangs the shooter on as well. That is an outstanding shot by Steve Lancock. Picks up two points here in the third end of play and retakes the lead. It'll be Lancock with a 3-2 lead. Team of Dean with last rock when we come back. We asked Saskatchewan what they know about 5G. Uh, more speed? More innovation? It's going to make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. This is what 5G looks like. Better, faster. Sounds like one more G. Sounds pretty good. I don't know what it means. All you really need to know is the future of 5G is here and will continue improving through investments in network technology. I've been raised on the farm since day one, so I was born into it. My grandfather came in here in 1905. I want to continue the farm for him and generations to come. So. I think it's a privilege that we get to be here. 
It's just a wonderful way of life. You know, what job is there that you can go to work with your dad and brother, with your kids by your side? Doesn't get much better than that. Fourth end underway here, the center guard throwing up once again to start this end off. And this time we're going to see Team Adeen throw the corner. The center guard attempt in the uh, second end ended up just on the other side of the center. And Adine, uh, the Adeen team played the corner to the other side. So they're mixing it up a little bit, using the whole sheet. Steve Laycock looking for the second center guard, now higher this time. They took a different approach in the uh, second end. Now that first center guard was a little farther off the center line in the first end, and they tried to basically plug the hole and take the corner guard away. Looking to line up these two guards now. Well, and that might have been plan B when they realized it was coming deeper. Again, curl it off that first stone, try to plug up the path to the corner. Looks like Erickson's got both shots available, but they're going to opt to come around the two reds. And this might just be a case where you know that at some point in time you might want to have to play a, a double peel on those two red uh, center guards and they're going to come back the top, top one's going to come back underneath that yellow guard somewhere you'd hate to put this stone in a spot where you're going to jam something on it when you get a chance to peel the middle so come around the center guard first boy he's got really nice line here actually overburies the high guard Probably half in around the second one. Full top eight, not quite biting the forefoot. It's a nice spot when you're coming around the other team's centers because if they happen to freeze to you, you still got lots of room to score the second point. Chris Heikert being asked to come around and sit somewhere in front of that Yellowstone, probably on a bit of an angle. I'll probably want it a little closer to the yellow than that. It does bite the 12 foot, but that basically acts as a third guard right now. and looking at trying to use the corner guard. There's not a lot of room through the middle because of the reverse stagger on those guards. You can see the, the red guard on the center line, the higher guard. By the time you're by that one and the way it's going to be curling towards that corner, that port's a lot smaller than it looks. by the red one now and now really starting to curl and not able to get by the the corner guard now they end up with a really good plan b out of it is not getting by the corner guard they end up uh coming to rest for second shot rock in the 12 foot piece of that stone exposed, but probably not enough to play the double. 
Sean Meacham has made his way down to look at the angles. Looking at playing uh, perhaps a double raise, the red guard that's tighter to the rings onto the one that's just biting the 12 foot. One top 12 can be used to uh, kill the Yellowstone that just rolled into the rings, but hard to imagine it getting too close to the other stone. So probably playing this fairly quietly. Enough weight to kill the, uh, the yellow at the top of the 12, you would think. I don't think they think they can get this over the top and, and get towards Shot Rock. So looking for the run, catches one onto the second. Does remove that yellow stone, and it is uh, Timadine continuing to sit one right now behind you know, two center guards and a rock in the 12 foot that acts as a third guard. And after rubbing the corner guard on the last one, there's a little more room now to try to get around that corner guard. They've pushed it just a little bit wider. Is Rasmus throwing now? It was still Chris, uh, Christopher on the last attempt. Rasmus uh, a little strong on this one. It's going to slide through the back and I believe all the way out of the rings. Regardless, it's still uh, Team Adine sitting shot rock top of the eight foot. Second shot belonging to Laycock top 12. Tough to play the, the double raise now. There's a lot of room between the first two stones. So they're going to look to come right around everything. The shot stone is over buried on the longer guard. There's actually plenty of room here to come around. And if he gets even a piece underneath the yellow stone, he's probably dead buried on the long guard. Sean Meacham with the draw attempt. He's got lots of room by the guards. Getting tight to that yellow stone now. It's a question of how deep is this going to be? And he comes to rest. Back button. Fully buried around that long center guard. Now there is a lot of room between the guard and the stone in the back of the button. Oscar Erickson wondering if they can play enough weight to tap it back. Probably roll open if he could do that. He'd like to get the play away from those guards right now. Well, they were on the brush right away on this one. Not going to get by the center guard. And hits it a little thick. Can't get underneath his corner either. So it continues to be Team Laycock sitting one at the back of the button. They did move the guard though. It is exposed.
the red yellow combination in the rings you probably can't see enough of the red to play it onto the yellow either so steve looking at how do we best protect shot rock for now So it looks like what they've decided, they want to play the guard all the way past the center line. You almost might leave a port onto that red-yellow at the top. I don't think there's any way. And with the, amount of, with the amount of space between those two rocks, I don't think Oscar could play the red onto the yellow back into the button area. John Meacham was certainly looking to be a little higher with this guard attempt. Ends up on a pretty good line, though. Oscar's first thought was to play the draw. I have to admit, I like the run, and I think that's what... Uh, Rasmus is looking at as well. He's got a couple of options with the run. If you're a little thin on the first one, you double off the two reds, the guard, and the one at the top of the 12 foot. You actually could play that double peel. You might even bring your shooter in off the back end of the corner yellow. But if you could ever hit the... Uh, the red guard just about right on the nose. You kill Shotstone off the button, and you're back to sitting one. Hard to tell from this angle whether or might they, whether or not it might be possible to drive it by the red at the top and clip your own out, though that would be a disaster. Oscar took a look at the triple peel as well, but I think in the end they've gone back to this seemed to be the shot that Rasmus liked, the, the run back attempt. A couple of ways this can work out good for you. Looks like he's going to have to take the top two. So that leaves Team Laycock sitting shot rock back of the button half exposed also half exposed in the top of the eight foot is the second shot stone belonging to team of dean there is an angle raise available on well actually two of them there's two yellows that could both be used to angle in there so steve laycock thinking maybe we better play on second shot rather than just throw the guard now also considering it looks like coming around from the outturn side and Bearing another one in there. Opting to plug the hole here. Probably expecting, you know, Oscar Erickson can't really ignore the guard if you if you make it. He's either going to have to run it back or peel it more than likely just to make sure he's got something to shoot at with his last one. If this was Steve Laycock's last one, you might see him look to come in because you have to respect the ability of these teams to make those angle runbacks, and it would be for two. But you don't expect him to play that on his first. 
kind of an all or nothing shot. So looking to make the guard. It's going to be a tight guard. You could even bring it right into the corner of the yellow. This has got a lot of curling to do, though. Coming now. It'll plug the hole. That's all we needed to do. Boy, Oscar Erickson, he's going to take a look at playing the run right now. Playing on the wider of the two guards. Reason for that, if you played the, the one that's closer to the center line, and the angle might be a little friendlier for you on that one, but if you just miss it, you probably end up covering the second one. By playing this one now, you've got really two chances at it. If you miss it with this one, your shooter rolls out of the way and you've still got another one you could angle in there. I'm not sure Steve Laycock thought that Oscar Erickson would play this on his first. First stone here, the out turn for the left-hander. Looking to angle it back. Might be a little thin on the first one. Comes back and, and does make contact with the shot stone. Nudges it back and I think has moved it far enough that T. Medine is sitting shot rock at the top of the eight foot. The Laycock stone, the one that they just moved back at the back of the eight still sits a second. And Laycock has room with the wide out turn to come around everything. Get to the top of the forefoot and be buried for shot rock. And that's what he's going to play. Has to be a little bit careful here. He can't, uh, can't rub off that yellow stone at the top of the eight foot into the opening. Might leave a double. Made an outstanding draw with his last stone in the third end to just nudge a, a Dean stone past his own at the back 12 and pick up two. Needs four foot to sit shot rock. We'll look to bury here. Nothing out of the brushers so far. Just waiting for this to start to curl and now it's moving on them. Got room by the guards. He'll be by the shot stone. And Steve Laycock pulls it into the top corner of the forefoot. And it does look like he's well buried. And so Oscar Erickson, if he wants to try to score two, is going to have to try another little angle run. Now it is there. Yellow guard onto the yellow at the eight foot onto the one that Steve Laycock just threw, but you'd have to still somehow or another spin the raised stone in towards the forefoot to get a deuce. I briefly looked at coming in off one of the other ones, but this is this is probably the safer shot to 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 get one at least. If you if you make the jam the first one, it's pretty hard to to spin that yellow out of the forefoot area because the yellow red are so close together and you're coming at the right angle. The tough part of this one will be getting the raised stone to spin into the forefoot for the second point. Very similar to the shot he just threw. Of course, this stone over about a foot farther towards the center line. So changes the path significantly.
Oscar Erickson with his final stone in the fourth end, trailing by one, facing one, looking for the angle run. If he can make the yellow, yellow, red, he should uh, certainly be able to score one and hoping he can spin the ray stone in for two. This is close. Makes the run, catches the second one, and does spin that ray stone right into the forefoot. It's actually shot rock. He'll pick up his two points here in the fourth end. Oscar Erickson, outstanding final shot. Steve Laycock will have last rock in the fifth. You can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Sean Joyce with you here live from the IG Wealth Management Western Showdown in Swift Current. And we're seeing something different here in the fifth end from what we've seen so far in this game. First stone brought into the rings. And now we're seeing Steve Laycock play the hit. They were looking to roll towards the corner. And that is the stone you see just rolling out of play. The two skips have taken turns making outstanding shots. It was Steve Laycock in the third and Oscar Erickson in the fourth to pick up or to exchange deuces. And now it would appear that uh, Steve Laycock content to try to blank this end perhaps and see if he can't keep the last rock in the even ends. I don't know that the uh, stone that slid into the rings on the last attempt was called as a, as a stone into the rings. I think that might've been a mistake. They play the center guard here and it does stop just short of the rings. Steve Laycock looks like he might be thinking about the tick, but they're going to play the corner guard. Well, this is looking a little bit more familiar to the way this game has gone so far. Aside from the first two stones, now we've got uh, center guard, corner guard, and Oscar Erickson looking at throwing another center. I know that uh, Oscar himself has, has played some mixed doubles. I'm not sure if uh, if Christopher and Rasmus have played much mixed doubles, but I do see uh, all three of these uh, Swedish players, given that they're playing shorthanded, have been pretty good about uh, jumping up to help with the sweep on their own rocks. And that is something you see a little bit more now with uh, players getting used to it from playing doubles as well.
Uh, we might see a, a peel attempt here. This is the sixth stone of the end now. Steve Lycock has asked Chris Hiker to come around. And he's not quite going to get around the tighter of the two guards. Just rubs off. Does get full 12 foot. Sits for shot rock, but fully out in the open. Rasmus Rana looking to make the hit on that stone and roll in behind the two center guards. Just the way they drew it up. Steve Laycock going to ask one more time for uh, Chris Heiker to come right around everything. And once again, the brushes are really going to have to go. Not going to get by, it doesn't look like. So now looking to maybe sit on the corner of that stone if they could. Nudges it a little bit, but does stay more or less on the corner. Be very tough for Oscar to pass that by in the shot stone. Looking at uh, coming around it, but I think they're going to make some kind of a play on the red. Even just the guard. It goes back to, I think his first, his first thought was to come around it, and I think that's what they've gone back to again. They have to be a little worried that uh, Sean Meacham will come down, play the red onto the yellow, and maybe spin two rocks towards the corner. Nice line here. If he's got the weight, this uh, has got to go. They want to get this to the forefoot if they could. Well, gets it far enough that probably doesn't leave the red onto the yellow double. It is Team Adine sitting two. Steve Laycock looking at the red onto the yellow. Roll the shooter to the corner. Could sit second and third after this. Might even be able to make the roll to the corner and uh, spin this redstone that he's raising first kind of directly in front of the one that was just delivered. Maybe even get a bit of a freeze there. Nothing out of the brush so far. Wants to hit this thick enough to hold the shooter. This is going to have to curl. Going to rub that first stone enough to push the yellow out into the open, but it does leave Team Adine sitting two for now. The shot stone uh, is exposed through the opening, and there's room to make the hit and roll behind center. So Erickson looking to guard it, I think, likely. Just plug that hole anywhere, and that should take away any path to shot rock. Everything on the uh, right side as the thrower looks at it is angled so that they'd have to hit and roll away. There's nothing where Steve Laycock could roll in towards the middle. He does perhaps have a, a tap on his own red stone at the top 12 foot into the 4 foot area.
and that tap is what Steve's looking at. The problem with the tap is you make it once, and you know that's great. You got shot rock, but how are you getting two? The other option, I guess, would be uh, you could play the hit on the guard that was just thrown and play yellow, yellow, red, yellow. Open things up a little bit. They've opted for the tap and they've been on the brush right away. Now waiting for it to curl. Really waiting for it to curl and they swept that early and I think I thought it was a line call in the end. They don't get quite enough curl. Taps it up enough to get second shot but still leaves Team Dean sitting shot and third. Probably his best bet here, and you see him looking at it, there is the, is the uh, split. He could play the uh, open redstone and roll towards the other red, but that's just going to promote it into shot rock. If he plays the split here, he could come down, get just to the center line stone, side of his own stone, push it in behind the red and the 12 foot, and roll his shooter in behind everything. He could probably sit three all buried. We are down to skip stones here in the fifth end of play. Team of Dean with a 4-3 lead over Steve Laycock. Laycock does have last rock here. On the brush fairly early on this one as well. Oscar Erickson up to help. He's got great line, but probably not quite the weight they had in mind. Does nudge his own stone up, but not able to get the shooter to roll far enough to be second. It's Team of Dean sitting two right now. A little bit of daylight there. Tough for uh, Steve Laycock to get enough of a roll to get shot rock here, though. I, I see Steve looking, and I was thinking the same thing. That might be his best bet right now is angle the corner guard in. Now, the problem with it is it's, it's another one of those shots that's almost all or nothing. If you don't get something good out of it, what are you going to have with your last one? Talking about coming off the red onto the back of the yellow in the top eight foot and then scoot back towards the one that shot rock now. The shot stone is just fully out in the open. There's maybe an inch or two of daylight. It's probably not enough to get inside of that and roll in for shot rock. Get a little bit of a roll, but probably not enough to get shot. Unless you absolutely whip it, which might be what they're talking about.
you have to think they're going to make some kind of play on that stone. Steve looking at it a couple of different ways. He's gone back and forth on that uh, come off the red on the left-hand side from the overhead view, the one that's in the 12 foot. And it would be fairly thin off that red because he wants to hit the back end of the second yellow, the one that's just not quite fully in the eight foot, hit the back end of that, have the shooter spin on towards the shot stone. Now that, uh, when you come into the side of that yellow, it, it might push the red and the other side of the eight foot into what is second shot stone. Could be a lot of rocks moving here. Steve Laycock setting up with his in turn. He's going to need a little bit of weight on this if he's going to pinball off three stones. And looking to hit the first one fairly thin. The brush was on right away. He's going to be way too thick on the front one. Comes across and just nudges the yellow up. And now it's Team of Dean sitting three. And if Oscar Erickson doesn't throw, I'm not sure how Steve Laycock scores. Probably the double angle raise. So the long guard on the uh, right-hand side of the overhead view onto the one at the top of the eight foot and, and try to tap it up into the four foot. Tough shot. He does have a shorter little tap back right now. The stone in the 12 foot tap it almost straight back and it comes in off the shot rocks. They're going to have to guard that. That will be the call. And then Steve Laycock, and you can see him back there. It looks like he's already eyeing up that uh, double angle raise. Not, not a shot he'd like to be playing, but it might be the only shot he's got left. So Oscar Erickson with his final stone here in the fifth end, sitting three, just looking to guard the easiest raise that Steve Laycock has. Well, mission accomplished there. Now uh, decision time for Steve Laycock. Do you play the, the run and the stone that... Oscar just threw onto the red at the top of the 12 foot and try to get your single that way, or you're playing the double tap on an angle on the other side of the sheet. Neither one of those is easy. And they're both just for a single point. Probably a little bit more room for error driving the yellow back onto the red because you can play it with some weight. That red, as long as you make contact with the red, it's not going by everything. You play the double tap and that's part of the issue is you've got to make the line perfect and still stop it on a dime because there's room to tap that red all the way through. This one you could throw technically as, as a hit. You wouldn't want to whip it down there, but you could throw it with... Uh, the hack or bumper, whatever you like. You're going to have to come in off of a Yellowstone to get your point anyway. And there's no port between the two of them.
So looking at driving the guard that uh, Oscar just threw just across the face ever so slightly of that red stone at the top of the 12 foot. Just enough to slash it back into the shot stone and then you'll need it to spill into the four foot from there. Most of the discussion would have been about the weight and the uh, and the broom. So they've got it set in their mind where they need to where they need to hit this and the weight they want to throw to make it. Steve Laycock with his final stone here in the fifth end, facing three, needing to make a double raise and spin the second stone into the forefoot just to try to score and this has got some curling to do he's going to be very thin on the first one does he make anything move at all well <laughs> i don't know where that was on the alphabet of the plan b c d but it did look like sean meacham saw it coming because he got into position to sweep that rock he didn't need to steve laycock pushes it up into the forefoot picks up his single point and we're all tied up after five ends of play It'll be Team Adeen with Last Rock when we come back for the sixth. Saskatchewan, you know Sastel because we are everywhere. Because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. With Sastel sponsorships, we get to be part of your community. We're here with you and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. Sastel cares. Always has, always will. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships. The Roaring Game. We all love it, but sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. Don't get stuck in your curling club this year. Learn the game inside and out. Play for your favorite country and take the curling world by storm. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. Got some questions about if our houses are painted or are they logo. Our events are always painted houses, but in the future coming out, I'm pretty sure we're going to be going to all logo houses. Uh, they're a great revenue source for any curling club. You can get your advertisements on there. And usually after the first year, the houses are paid for. It's all free money for you. So hopefully check, it, check Jet Ice out for your future in-house logo. Well, Steve Laycock with his final stone in end uh, number five, they did take their time to discuss the options that they had available with all the angles, but I don't think they likely at all discussed the option that they ended up getting. Very thin on the first one, makes a couple more taps and ends up with a single point. The end result is we're all tied up after five ends of play, and it is Team Adeen with Last Rock here as we begin the sixth of an eight-end game. The center guard was thrown up to start the end. You saw the tick attempt. Pushes that red stone. Still biting the edge of the 12 foot, but gets the shooter out of the center line area as well. And looks like they're going to play the tick one more time. There has been some discussion about... Uh, the so-called no-tick zone when you're touching the center line, which I believe now is going to be in play for the Worlds and for the Briar and Scotties, but not being used here at these uh, this particular bond spill. I do believe it's in effect for extra ends here. Well, Christopher Sundgren, after making a good tick on his first shot, makes arguably a better one on his second. It's 
Steve Laycock will look for another center guard and then uh, that'll be the fifth rock of the end. So a chance for Team Adine to start peeling those guards. does have last rock here in the uh, even end so going to opt to go behind his two staggered corner guards first play a little bit of offense here trying to put some pressure here on uh, Steve Laycock maybe force him into a decision Steve uh, tied up playing the even end not a comfortable position if he decides to go hard for the steal he's got to be willing to to ignore this shot if it's buried behind the corner. Got room by the front one. Really moving now. And an outstanding draw actually overburies the longer of the two guards. Sitch shot rock. Good piece of the eight foot. And the Laycock team, I think, having a bit of a meeting and a, trying to discuss how they uh, how they want to approach this. Your choice is now, oh, pardon me, Steve made his way over for a bit of a drink, I believe. There's a water cooler out there. So the decision now is do you chase around the corner and never comfortable chasing the other team around their own corner guard when they've got last rock. But pretty risky to ignore that altogether. It's in a great spot for Team Adeen. Chris Hiker going to be asked to come down, sit on the corner of it. This one also has plenty of room by the garden. Looks like this could be just a little bit more weight now. Starting to dig in. Doesn't want to rub off that stone at all, but needs to be shot rock. Outstanding placement. Big shot there by Chris Heikert. Still to play right now is around the corner guard and Team Adine happy to play around the corner in the even ends. They're okay if they get forced here. They would expect the force back in the seven and they'd have last rock coming home. So they'll take their chance here to get two if they can get it and especially if they can keep the play away from the middle. Rasmus Rana looking to come down now just nudge this stone enough to break up the red yellow freeze that's there probably try to leave the yellow stone on top of the red and maybe a little piece out in the open now a little more weight when he's looking to break these stones up comes down nudges them both and does pop the red out ever so slightly into the open. It is Laycock sitting one, but second and third belong to Team Adine. Steve Laycock now looking to come around the center guard from the wide side. The other side has to be careful not to leave any kind of double here. Sean Meacham. With his first stone here in this sixth end. Little bit of a clean brush early now. They've backed away, picking it up again just outside the hog line. Boy, this is really starting to curl now, and I'm not 
I'm not sure that he didn't rub that on the way by and straighten it out just a little bit, but if he did, it also took some weight off. And I think it has come up short enough that uh, certainly Team Medina is sitting second shot. They might be sitting second and third. And the options they're discussing. Do you play the double angle raise? And looks like that's the one they've settled on. You can see probably about a third of that stone. But the way these curl, that is tough. It's there, but it's tough. And you ever rub the yellow? You get nothing out of it. Playing the angle raise, there is the chance you could be sitting three when this is done, too. Looks like that's what they've settled on. Coming from this side, it's only about a, well, more than, a, just, just over a foot between the yellow red in the, in the rings. It would be hard to drive it by coming from this angle. Half a rock on the first one should be close. To driving it across the top just enough to spin it in for the third one just like that and boy there's a bonus spun it all the way across in behind the two guards in the middle certainly team Adine sitting two right now i think perhaps sitting three shot rock buried around two reds in the middle sean meacham i think eyeing up the double run back Steve Laycock, his first thought was to hit uh, what his second shot and try to roll in to that four foot area behind the three rocks near the center line. Might, if you hit this just right, just nudge that uh, stone at the edge of the 12 foot on the way by, and that would be enough to make sure that it's not third shot. It wouldn't take much of a movement on that stone to make the one at the top of the 12 foot second shot. Sean Meacham looking for the hit and roll and now looking for some curl on the shooter. Will make the hit. Does catch that stone at the edge of the 12 foot. Spins it far enough back that uh, stone at the top 12 is now third shot and the shooter comes to rest for shot rock edge of the button. Great shot by Sean Meacham. Does leave the one yellow at the back of the 12. So Erickson looking uh, double run. If you hit it perfectly, it's red onto red, onto yellow, onto red. And the angles are probably there so that you could actually send all the reds flying, leave the yellow in the forefoot, and that stone at the back of the 12 would then be second shot. The angles are there, but there's a lot of room between these stones, and you'd have to hit it just perfect to make all three reds go away. The raised stone has to leave the rings as well for that one at the back to come into play. Rasmus Rana going to give it a go. Got the big weight here. Makes the hit, drives it across. Does get all three reds going now. Is it going to spin far enough? It's not behind the T line. All Oscar Erickson can do is... Uh, wave it over doesn't roll quite far enough so it's still laycock sitting second the bonus out of that for uh team of dean is 
Shot Rock stayed buried in behind the raised stone. Corner of the button. Now it is awfully close to the pinhole. Does give Steve Laycock the chance to come down, sit on the corner of it. Even if he's not Shot Rock, it becomes very hard for Oscar Erickson to score a second point. But if Steve Laycock could ever maybe nudge it a little bit, might be able to get Shot Rock corner frozen in behind cover. And this is the kind of shot that could set up a steal. He has made some outstanding draws in this game. few feet of brushing just out of his hand now they've let it go as they wait for the curl starting to go now nice line by the guard needs to stay just on the corner a little bit if he's going to get shot rock it's going to over curl that but does do a very good job as we said as i said uh not going to be a lot of room right now for oscar erickson to try to score his second point and he still has to be careful Steve Laycock has, uh, even if he wanted to play the straight run back right now, yellow onto the red, pretty risk-free. That red at the top of the button is not going very far. Oscar Erickson looking with his first stone now to get something in the way so that Steve can't just play a run back onto the red he just threw. Probably doesn't want to be right on the face of the red. Probably wants to be angled ever so slightly. Get right to the face of the red and it won't change anything. Steve Laycock will still play the run back. Interesting here when uh, Oscar Erickson jumps up to sweep, being the left-hander, they can set things up so that both guys have their uh, slider foot as the forward foot. Comes down and does sit right on the angle. The problem that creates for Steve Laycock is his Best angle run in if he was to try to run in the red guard. He's going to leave that yellow at the top of the forefoot. He could play the yellow straight back, but there's the danger of leaving two yellow rocks in the top of the house, even if you make it. And he knows that Oscar Erickson has the chance that he could, that's what they're looking at. Uh, I don't think they're looking at coming off their own. They're more worried that that's what Oscar Erickson plays for three come all the way across and kick the redstone out of the top of the button and it's for three. And pretty risk-free for Oscar. He'd have to get awfully unlucky to come across off the back of his own and roll out. Steve Laycock looking at uh, trying to draw to the button by the looks of it. Does have room. He could get just a corner of a stone around the one that uh, Oscar Erickson just threw. Probably takes everything away. Might even be able to get shot rock and, and set up the steal. The danger is if you ever rub off the stone that Oscar Erickson just threw, you're leaving a double for three. And in the sixth end, that's probably the game. So 
Steve Laycock with his final stone here in the sixth end without last rock. Facing one, looking to try to get into a position where he can perhaps steal the end at the very least, not leave Oscar Erickson any shot for two. Plenty of room by the guards. The issue is he's got to get by that stone at the top of the fourth one, and it is really curling now and not going to get by. So now the question is, can we stop it where it doesn't leave a double? And it might have stopped just in time. For Erickson to try the double, there's the risk he drives it by the red and clips his own stone. I don't know if it's worth that risk. We're just never going to get a camera in there in a good enough angle to tell. Like he can, he can get it by the stone at the top of the forefoot and and touch the one at the top of the button for sure. But it's a question of it doesn't look like he can hit it very thick, which means if you're going to get that one on the top of the forefoot to move very far, he can't just throw it with like back line. He's going to have to throw a hack to bumper at least. And now if you miss the red one. You're killing the shot stone, and with just hacked a bumper, it could be a steal at two, so you probably have to throw a little more weight. Looks like he's going to give it a go. I thought they might look at, uh, the, you know, the shot that, that Steve Laycock was looking at coming in off that outside stone, but can't play with takeout weight anymore, but you could play hit and roll off that stone, try to get to the corner of the button for two that way. It's a little less risky than this one. Oscar Erickson with his final stone, looking to double the two reds out of the forefoot area, leave the two yellows around the outside if he can. Going to be a little... Oh, I thought he was a little thin on the first one, but he hits it perfect. Catches the red out of the top of the forefoot, spins it out. And it will be two points on the board for Team Adine. They'll take a 6-4 lead after six ends of play. It'll be Steve Laycock with Last Rock in the seventh. Hey, wake up. There's so much out there to see. Look up. Look down. Quick, look over there. Look for a little trouble, but not too much. Open your eyes to something new every day. The hustle, the bustle, the calm, the serene. Maybe then you'll see that sometimes you have to go far to get a little closer. So wake up. The day is far from over. Seize the days. SASTEL Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTEL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. Enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Sean Joyce with you here live from the IG Wealth Management Western Showdown in Swift Current, where Oscar Erickson throwing the final two stones for Team Dean here. This afternoon has been putting on an absolute clinic. He has made a couple of outstanding shots, including his final stone in end number six, needing a double. And I'll be honest, when uh, Rasmus Rana stood up straight as that rock got inside the hog line, I think 
even they thought perhaps he was a little thin on the contact. Ended up hitting it absolutely perfect. Picked the two reds clean, gets his deuce, and that sets him up in a spot where he's got a two-point lead as we begin play here in the seventh. But uh, looking to come around on that attempt, just rubs. And now three guards in play for Steve Laycock to work with. Albeit two of them belonging to Team Adine and on the center, near the center line. Braden Stewart will look to come around wide on the intern side, around his own corner guard, first of all. Really going to have to go to get by. This is not going to get by. He's going to rub the corner guard. Pushes it over towards the center and rolls his shooter for a wider corner. Christopher Sundgren now going to try to come around the three guards in that middle area. The two of them are lined up, but uh, with the amount of curl that we've seen, you could certainly overbury those two, and that brings that other guard into play. Fairly tight by the guards. And we'll bring it into the top of the forefoot, just a nibble. And if it was just the two guards, he would have peeked out a little bit in the open. So that third one, helping them out for sure. Steve Laycock, trailing by two here as we begin playing the seventh. Going to look to come around, follow that down, sit on the corner. Chris Heikert's going to come up just a little bit light, rubs off that stone. Actually, if he gets by, his weight would have been pretty close. So just, just over curled on him. Sits for second shot in the top of the 12 foot, but it is open with room to roll underneath. That'll be the call here. Rasmus with the intern. We're on the brush early, now backing away, waiting for the curl to get the roll underneath. And rolls just to put perfectly in line. Great shot. Steve Laycock, no choice now but to try to clean things up. Needs some room to move some rocks. Asking uh, Chris Eichert to move two or three here. Not the way they had it in mind. They were actually playing the red one back, trying to get two or three moving out of a line. He does move two yellow guards, but leaves the two Adine stones. Shot rock behind, co behind cover. It's just the one lone red guard now, so... Oscar Erickson looking to throw a second guard. Probably staggered a little bit. A lot of room yet to get a piece of this underneath the longer guard starting to move now does get about half underneath the long guard so Sean Meacham's going to make a play on the guards well, that's interesting Steve Laycock looking at running the the angle 
on the red guard off the center line on the right side into the two stones in the rings. Now that will leave the two staggered guards on the center line. is all he's looked at hasn't uh he's, he's not interested in making a play on the two guards on center this is definitely an offensive play he's trying to stick this he might be able to double the two yellows and, and leave the uh, raised stone behind cover he'd be happy if he just sticks it kill at least one of those stones Makes the run, does catch them both, and gets both of them all the way out of the rings and out of play. Does leave the, sh the raised stone at the top 12, sitting one. Steve Laycock saw it. Sean Meacham threw it, made it perfectly. And that swings the balance of this end very quickly. Three rocks on or very near the center line. Oscar Erickson could still opt to play around the center, but with one already sitting at the top of the 12, you're flirting with giving up three. You make the play on the guards. Even if you just peel the top one, it's a fairly short run on the second one. So in that case, you're probably not looking at any worse than two. Could make the double run here. That's what the call is. The only thing is you're going to completely open up the center line. Just makes the peel on the higher guard. So it gives Steve Laycock the chance to try to use the corner. Probably expect that uh, Tima Dean will play the short run yellow on to red at the top of the house. So you want to keep this red in a position where that wouldn't be a great angle for a double. Plenty of room by the guard, but they got to get this deep enough to bury. And it looks like it's going to stay mostly out in the open. The other thing about it is that yellow red at the top, a nose hit on the yellow, be very close to a double on the reds. Oscar looking at hitting it on a bit of an angle. Make sure you make the, the first run back. The problem then is if you roll to the corner, you probably guard that stone that was just delivered. He could play it that one directly. That might be what they opt for. Play the hit on the stone that was just delivered. You might even be able to roll behind the two on the center line. Force Steve Laycock to make a move on those stones somehow. Skip stones to come here in the seventh end. Team of Dean with a two-point lead, but Laycock sitting two right now. They do have last rock. Oscar Erickson in the hack to throw his first. Looking for the hit and roll. This is going to have to curl. It's going to be very thin on the first one and not able to get it out of the rings and his shooter will roll through the back. 
Well, that might be the first real significant miss Oscar Erickson has had in this game. And all of a sudden, three points here is in play for Steve Laycock in this seventh end. So going to draw to the wide side. Just keep these rocks all spread out. Has to be a little bit careful not to leave a double off the one in the center line. If you leave it, you know, uh, Oscar Erickson's going to try to play it. Probably has a double available right now if he wants to play it yellow onto the red and then have that raised stone come across and take out the one on the edge of the 12 foot. A lot of room between those rocks and you're playing a, a raise in the first place. So it's a tough double. If it's all he's got, he might give it a go. Steve Laycock, he wants to leave this fairly high on the open side. If you start getting back towards the T-line, Oscar Erickson will have a shot to play the uh, the piece of the redstone at the center line that he can see and come towards the one that Steve's about to deliver. So he doesn't, doesn't really want to leave him that double if he can avoid it. Tough to be high enough in the rings here not to leave him something. Taking its time getting off that center line. Definitely wanted to be nice and wide. Now they might opt to try to come deep. Well, that probably leaves Oscar the chance to hit and roll off that behind, but it also might have left a raise. It, boy, it's it's close to a raise triple. If Oscar Erickson hits that yellow, it's almost right on the beak, and he he might get all three of them. He certainly, with the raised stone, has got uh, two chances at doubles, either driving the red stone towards the one that Steve just played, or having the raised stone come across and catch the yellow at the top at the edge of the eight foot, or pardon me, edge of the twelve foot. But to me, from this camera angle, it looks like. A nose hit on the yellow is going to be very close to getting all three reds. Steve Laycock certainly didn't throw that bad. He's okay with the weight. He was okay with it being back there. But uh, I think they expected that to get off the center line a lot earlier than it did and, and be a little wider. And if that's out, you know, if you take that another foot closer to the boards, the angles probably aren't there. For all these options. Oscar Erickson with the run back attempt. Catches one, catches two. Boy, he touches the third one, but uh, not going to have enough to get it out. So just makes the double. Was that close to making all three of them go away? Does leave Steve Laycock the chance to draw for his deuce. Going to play the same draw he just threw. sneaking a peek myself at the replay screen which which I have available and boy that didn't need to curl much more he made the first double very solidly so wouldn't have needed to curl much more uh, half an inch maybe gets all three of them as it is Steve Laycock sitting one with last rock a chance to draw tie this game up after seven ends brushers pick this up right away he did make this same draw on his first one, but he was deep on the first one. Did he overcompensate? Brushers have not left it. Still going hard. 
And he did take a little bit too much off, and that's going to come up short of the rings. It'll be a score of one for Steve Laycock. That extra point getting away from him. It'll be Team Dean with a 6-5 to five lead and last rock as we play the eighth. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. If our houses are painted or are they logo, our events are always painted houses. But in the future, coming out, I'm pretty sure we're going to be going to all logo houses. Uh, they're a great revenue source for any curling club. You can get your advertisements on there, and usually after the first year, the houses are paid for. It's all free money for you. So hopefully, check it, check Jet Ice out for your future in-house logo. You can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Well, Steve Laycock, you saw him, uh, talking to his team just after the end and I saw him make a gesture with his hand and maybe talking about a difference in the release between the two stones. Certainly the first one took forever to cross the center line and that second one definitely took a different line on the way down. Between that and he probably did adjust the weight just a little bit. He got into a different path, comes up short. It's just a single point. He was going to need to steal the eighth end anyway. Now he needs to steal one in the eighth just to get a chance to play nine. They threw up the center guard. Team Adin opting to go right around it. Christopher Sundgren puts it on the top of the forefoot, dead in behind cover. Laycock opting for the second center guard, knowing that uh, eventually... The Swedish team will look to start peeling guards, so you need as many of them as you can for now. You'll worry about the stone on the button later. Christopher Sundgren being asked to put another one around to the top of the forefoot. Plenty of room by the guards. A little bit of waving by Rasmus, indicating they might be nudging just a little bit. And it does. Leaves them slightly overlapped. Steve Laycock now asking Chris Eichert to come down. He'd like to nudge them a little bit more. Hard to... Uh, get the line they're looking for and get them behind the T-line, but uh, even if he just gets one behind the T-line and breaks the angle, it'll give him a couple of rocks to work with. Wants to get as close to the nose on that first stone as he can. Does. Nudges the shot rock to the back forefoot now, and the shooter stays in front of the yellow at the button. Oscar lining up here for the double peel. 
five rocks have been played, so they can start peeling guards now. Like to get two here. There's a chance this could come back onto the uh, if he makes the double peel, might come back onto the yellow at the back corner of the forefoot, but he wasn't won't mind losing that one right now. Catches one, just rubs the second guard enough to get it off the center line, though. Steve Laycock looking at coming around that stone. I thought they might throw the long guard on top of it. I think that's what they've opted for, the long guard. You know that uh, Team Adine is going to peel guards for a little while yet. You can probably afford to play a couple of guards. Well, actually, he's looking to guard the two in the middle or in the rings, which will leave Team Adine some angle to try to play both guards. That, that surprises me a little bit. I'm surprised he played the guard in that position. It, it leaves angle for uh, Team Sweden, the, the, the Adin team, to play the double peel. And really, there's still not much they could jam on. There's not, not really much risk playing this double peel either. Rasmus Rana gets one, gets two, spins them both all the way out of play and loses the shooter as well. No guards left now. It is Team Adin sitting two. No choice now for Steve Laycock. He's going to have to guard the one red stone that's in play, that stone at the top of the eight foot. Probably guarded at least twice now. You may see him have to tap it up with his first stone. Do it any earlier than that. You give the, the Swedes too much time to, to try to blast everything out of the forefoot area. Sean Meacham with the guard. Rasmus Rana just looked to peel that one straight out. Does make the peel, loses the shooter. Steve Laycock eyeing up whether or not to make a play into the rings now. Surprises me that he's playing it this early. And this is, in, in my mind, maybe one shot too early. So you're going to give uh, Team Adin two chances to blast everything out of the forefoot. And again, keep in mind, it's it's not a tie game here. Adin's got a one-point lead. So he doesn't need to think about scoring. If he can get the reds all out of play, he doesn't care how many yellows go with them. John Meacham made a nice little tap, but I think they all go. Looking at trying to play the double on the two reds and, and maybe leave the yellow there as well. I think if you're trying to get them all, you hit... Uh, from the overhead view, hit a little bit on the right-hand side. 
and try to spin the red out over the uh, the top of the one at the back of the forefoot. Oscar's looking at hitting on the left-hand side over the top of the red and, and trying to squirt it almost through the hole. You have, you'd have to miss the one at the corner of the button to do that. Even if you double the two yellows, you know, as long as the one red goes away, the other one, the, the redstone ends up behind the T-line, you're in pretty good shape. The other thing is he, he really doesn't need to necessarily kill the second stone if he can get it out of the forefoot and open. You know, if you roll this to the edge of the eight foot, that's not a stone that Steve Laycock is going to be able to guard needing to steal. The weight they're going to throw, one red goes easy. It's a question of where the second one's going to end up, and I think they're going to play it the way I was discussing, you hit it on just on the broom side as they're throwing it. The top stone flies easy. The second one's going to kill the yellow that's behind it and then should spin a little bit. And you're hoping it goes over the top of your own at, at the edge of the forefoot. Just like that. Actually made contact with it, kills it out the back, which probably helps you if you're Team Adine. Just leaves the one red in the rings now, the edge of the 12 foot. Again, when you're trying to steal, that is not a rock that Steve Lycock's going to be able to guard with any chance to steal. He's going to have to throw one in the middle, knowing full well that Oscar Erickson's going to peel it on his first one. And then you try to sit two somewhere and, and hope. I'm interested to see here when you make this guard, does uh, Oscar Erickson even risk running it towards the, the stone in the 12 foot? It's really the only, the only way you're in any danger here if you're Oscar Erickson is if you happen to jam something and have it spin back into the four foot area where Steve Laycock could actually guard a, a stone that you might steal with. Now he's laying it up. Going to take a run at it anyway. Not a lot of risk here. He, there is a yellow in play at the back, but if you jam on it, it wouldn't be in the rings. And coming from that much of an angle, even if you jammed it so thin onto the, the rock in the 12 foot that it spins back into the house, it's probably going to be back four at best. Of course, if you can ever make that one on the edge of the 12 foot go away, you've got a one point lead here. No matter where Steve Laycock throws his last one, you just need to make it go away. You wouldn't have to stay. That's why you make this attempt. Oscar Erickson has made some outstanding doubles in this game. Makes one more. Now, is it going to spin all the way out the back? And with that much weight and the action that he gets off the contact, it does spin all the way out the back. Steve Laycock. Nothing left to hide behind. Needs a steal here. He's got that rock sitting maybe an inch from the bumper. He's going to try to corner freeze the front of that. And that's all he's got to work with for any kind of protection. Oscar Erickson has made 
well, to my recollection, at least three absolutely outstanding doubles. One of them was almost a triple, a run triple. And really, that one counts amongst them. That's a, That was a long raise between those two stones. Bonus to get the second one. It wasn't necessary for him, but it, it certainly is going to make his last stone a little bit easier. Steve Laycock, not much real estate to work with here. And the downside for Steve, even if you make the freeze and boy, they lost the line at the end, he's not going to have any of the rings at all. Oscar Erickson doesn't have to throw his final stone. It'll be Team Dean coming through with a 6-5 to five victory here over Steve Laycock. The IG Wealth Management Western Showdown. Dean moves on to an A qualifier tomorrow morning. Steve Laycock will drop down to the B event and continue on play. There will be another draw here in just about an hour's time. And uh, the action continues tomorrow and Sunday as well. Playoffs are on Monday. We hope you'll join us for all of that. I've been Sean Joyce. You've been a great audience. We'll hope to see you again in about an hour's time. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your stream curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. I've been raised on the farm since day one, so you know, I was born into it. My grandfather came in here in 1905. I want to continue the farm for him and generations to come. So. I think it's a privilege that we get to be here. It's just a wonderful way of life. You know, what job is there that you can go to work with your dad and brother, with your kids by your side? Doesn't get much better than that.